Well, the 6L80's out, the Turbo 400's ready to go in, but let's talk about the parts that you're going to need for the swap first. Welcome back to the garage and as always huge shout out to the new subscribers out there if you haven't subscribed already click that button ring that bell check out the live show on Thursday nights and also check out the description for links to our sponsors we are in the middle of our turbo 400 swap we're going from a 6L80 to a turbo 400 and I want to go across a couple of the parts that you're going to need in order to complete this swap obviously one of them is a gear shifter I've got a video I'll throw up in the corner of installing the Hurst uh, quarter stick shifter for this reverse valve body uh, turbo 400 from FTI one of the other big things that you need to be aware of is that this unit is about an inch shorter than the 6L80 whenever it's mounted up so you're probably going to need a new drive shaft unless you're lucky enough to have a four leg suspension like me where you can just move your axle forward an inch. That being said, I'm still going to need to do a new drive shaft because that one's not going to be able to handle the power that we're putting down to the ground. Anyways, so keep that in mind, new drive shaft. On top of it, you're going to need a transmission mount. Now, I just got a nice rubber and metal transmission mount that bolts up to the TH400, has a single bolt or a dual bolt that you can go in and mount it to your transmission cross member based on which transmission. If you're going from a 6L80, you might be able to reuse your cross member as it is. If you're going from a six speed or something like that, uh, you know, manual, you'll probably have to build an adapter. And a lot of people just put a plate off the end of the existing transmission cross member and find a place to mount it that way because you gotta remember, you're not really supporting any weight back here. You're, for the most part, you are just keeping things steady. Uh, but do get one with rubber in there, that way it doesn't break. You can break the housing and the tail shaft and things like that if you get a solid one. And so keep that in mind. The other thing that you're going to need is a dipstick. And in this case, I actually went with the short, uh, low car dipstick that mounts directly into the pan. And it's the locking one. So you have to take the pan off in order to install it because there's a nut that goes up on the bottom side. The nice thing about it is, is that nut is kind of captured between the case uh, so whenever it's screwed down tight, there's no way really for that nut to back itself off. On top of it, you need to keep in mind whether or not you want to run a trans temp, because if you do, that's a great time to tap your pan. I went ahead and drilled and tapped the pan for one HMPT uh, temperature sensor, and we will tie that back to an auto meter gauge. Uh, something else that you're going to want to take into consideration is what you're going to do about uh, transmission cooling. So instead of trying to reuse the unit that's up in the radiator from the factory on this one, we're going to go with the Durali remote mount. And I'm actually going to put it in the back underneath the bed. Has its own fan, has its own uh, thermostat on it. So whenever the temperature reaches 180, it automatically kicks the fan on, draws air across it. And you can wire it up for push or pull based on how you want to mount it. But I've got so much room back here out of the way. Instead of trying to snake hoses up to the front, I just figured I'd get a power unit and we'll see how it does. It is, I'll throw a link down below, it's kind of the mid-tier, it's not the, we the weakest one, but it's also not the power, most powerful fan uh, uh, cooler core combination because they make some that are pretty expensive, get up four or $500 that have dual fans on there with a lot of cores on there that will, you know, handle the heat. We'll see how this does uh, with that one and, and go from there. Uh, what else do we need? Well, we've got a trans brake on this unit, so we're going to need a button or a relay to wire this back in. And we're also going to need to dive into how we're going to stage this thing. So we'll get a bump box, probably that uh, smooth stage box, and I'll go over wiring that up and setting it all up in a later date once we get this thing kind of in and wired up. Okay, the big things that you're going to need whenever you do this swap, obviously, oh, goodness. You're going to need a torque converter for the TH400. It's a little bit different than the uh, 6L80. So the nice thing about it, these things are available off the shelf, all kinds of stalls, all kinds of horsepower ratings, and they're a lot cheaper than the 6L80. More importantly, though, you're probably going to need a flex plate. And let me explain why. The offset of the um, torque converter in a Turbo 400 or a Power Glide is actually about half an inch deeper into the case than it is on a 6L80 or a, even a 4L as, as far as I know. So because of that, there's a couple different ways that you can go about it. People make spacers to offset the flywheel, things like that. What I've ended up doing is going with the JW Performance Transmission 
that they call it the wheel, and this one is specific for the LSA or the LT1, the fifth generation motors, and it is the eight bolt pattern. But as you can see, it has the offset in the plate itself. Then on top of it, the ring gear is set back so the factory starter will engage properly. But on top of that, you're going to need one of the adapters that goes on the end of the torque converter to make sure it centers up on your crank. So these things are available everywhere. ICT Billet makes a very nice one. Check them out down below the link. And that will just made up at the output of your crank into your torque converter to keep everything lined up. You still may need to shim the torque converter a little bit. There is specifications on how much wiggle room that you should have on the torque converter to keep it from disengaging the oil pump. So make sure you check that engagement, make sure you get it locked all the way into the oil pump properly whenever you install the torque converter, and then make sure that you're not pulling it too far out at the end of it because uh, you do not want that thing to disengage the oil pump. Catastrophic. But as I said, there are Various options out here, but honestly, this is an SFI rated unit and it's very well priced, the JW Performance uh, Wheel. So check them out, they've gone for LS's, LSA's, as I said, and 5th Gen's. So that is kind of the easy stuff, that's the hardware. There's not a lot going on, that's why we're switching over to Turbo 400. It's nice and simple, nothing crazy going on. Uh, you know, we've got some wiring to do, we've got some wiring to do as if, if, to bypass the TCM that was in the 6L80, we have to bridge the CAN bus connectors because it is in line between the ECM and the rest of the module. So if you do not bridge those connectors, the ECM will not talk and you just won't get a start. On top of it, we have a neutral safety switch in our uh, uh, Hearst shifter that we can bring back into the existing harness and replace the neutral safety signal or the, uh, basically the park signal start ready signal that was coming from the transmission because on this transmission it is still just a standard digital signal it is an on off style switch we can use the same one in the shifter to act just the same without having to worry about going in and disabling things like starter checks and other stuff like that so all of that will be covered in a future video for now i'm just going to focus on getting this thing installed right now and then uh, whenever i come back we will touch on wiring everything up and getting this thing started so so just wanted to do a quick video, give you an overview of the parts. If there's other parts that you can think of that I haven't thought of that I didn't include in here, uh, let me know. But as I said, there's not a lot of parts that's really involved on this swap. That's the nice thing about it. It can seem daunting at first, but it's really not that bad. So uh, I'm going to get back to work. Thanks for stopping by in the garage. You know the drill. ABT, always be tuning.